Hey everyone, it's Sandra, and today's video is actually going to be really, really fun. I got ready using products that I have not used in a very long time. Products that I bought that I either forgot about or are just like, they just kind of got lost in the shuffle and the excitement because, you know, we're constantly being bombarded with new stuff. We're easily distracted. Sometimes it's easy for old makeup to kind of get lost in the shuffle. So I have revisited items from my makeup collection that I have not received a a lot of love from me so I have done this look using old rediscovered loves and I've also decluttered some beauty products in the process so if you want to hear me talk about things that I've purchased and have not used in a while and if you want to see how this look all came together just keep on watching all right so for foundation my least favorite foundation is Tom Ford waterproof foundation slash concealer I have not touched this in a very 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 long time I just, I don't like it, but it was so expensive that I kept it in my collection with the idea that one day I'll figure out a way to make this work and it just never happened. Today we'll see if it's worth hanging around or if I should finally part ways with it. One of the foundations that I bought for mixing purposes a couple months ago was the Giorgio Armani Maestro Glow Foundation and I bought this solely for mixing in with more like matte high coverage foundations in order to make them look a little bit more glossy and to sheer them out a little bit. I got this on clearance on the Armani website. I have not tried this since I purchased this. I'm going to make some together with the hopes that the Tom Ford foundation will kind of have a, a new lease on life. A little bit goes a long way with this foundation. I made the mistake of using too much at the beginning. It looked like you just put plaster all over my face. Um, it's very, very intense. A little goes a long way. Kind of like how the, um, the Vanish, the new Vanish foundation by Hourglass. That is, I'm kind of getting similar vibe from that. Just a small amount of this and then I'm going to add a couple of drops of the Armani foundation. Is it a Sandra video if she's not mixing at least two products for her complexion? So yeah, I'm gonna do a little mixing on the back of my hand. From all my failed experiments with the Tom Ford foundation, I learned that this does apply best with fingers. I just feel like every time I've tried to wear the Tom Ford foundation by itself, it would just cling to bits of dry skin on my face and even if I didn't have bits of dryness going on it would like dry my skin out around my mouth and my chin like I know my nose looks red but in the camera it looks 10 times more red than it does in real life and I try not to use too much coverage on my nose because I feel like a lot of products tend to slip and slide and not wear well on my nose and it kind of tends to be like the telltale sign that you're wearing a lot of makeup. All right, so the base is done. It's looking very, very luminous due to this um, oily foundation. If this can last nicely through the day, I think that this would be a combination that I can continue going to if I want to use this up. In terms of concealer, my least used concealer in the past year has been the Tanti Doll Ultra Wear Concealer. And I'm not sure why, because this is actually not a bad product at all. This is an excellent concealer. I just never reach for it. I think it might be due to the packaging because I'm so lazy. I just love a dual foot applicator and just like, or something where I can just directly swipe it under my eye and kind of be on the go. This is very high coverage, so it takes a bit of finessing. I find that if I just go straight under my eye with this, I always end up over applying and it ends up looking really bad. This is the type of product where like, the second you apply too much, it will start to crease. It will look really Really unflattering so it's all about finding that balance like a tiny little bit goes a long way Lisa Eldridge actually did a video on the Lancome YouTube channel of like how she uses it and you see what a tiny 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 amount you really need you literally need a tiny 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 amount but it's actually it's actually a very nice concealer don't I don't know I'm, I just need to put in the effort more I guess but I always say like to me the best beauty product, like the, the best makeup product, the best skincare product is the product that you want to use every single day. It doesn't matter how amazing it is, it doesn't matter, matter how beautiful the packaging is, if you're not using it on a consistent basis, it's no good to you. I mean, it's just gonna sit and collect dust. So to me, a good beauty product is the one that you will just love it so much you just want to use it every day. And especially with, with skincare, I mean, you can have the most badass serum in the world, but if you're not using it daily, you're not going to get any benefits from it. Consistency is very important in 
<laughs> most aspects of life actually I'm pretty happy with how my under eye area is looking when it comes to setting powder I don't have a particular powder that I have been neglecting so I'm just gonna use my regular stuff I'm using my Laura Mercier under eye powder under my eyes and then I'm using my pure minerals mineral powder to set the rest of my face I have two bronzers that I have been neglecting one of them I'm going to actually get rid of today but I thought I would mention it and talk about it I have the Too Faced chocolate milk chocolate Soleil bronzer and an Estee Edit bronzer called the Bears bronzer in shade number 01 light medium Estee Edit is a brand that used to be owned by I mean it was owned by Estee Lauder they discontinued it after like two years and then the Too Faced milk chocolate Soleil bronzer is a bronzer that has been in my collection for a long time. I bought this a long time ago. They have since changed the packaging. I feel like the packaging has gone through like three different iterations. And while I used to be obsessed with this bronzer, it's a really, really nice color. I actually used up a whole one before. It doesn't smell like chocolate anymore, which I think, I think that means it's gone bad. I have had this for a long time. Oh God. It smells like, it just smells like chemicals now. <laughs> so I don't think that, I don't think that's a good idea. So yeah, I'm going to be parting ways with this. Definitely think it's past its expiration date, but I've had, I've had my good times with this bronzer. It's been, it's been a favor for a long time, but I've since just discovered formulas that I prefer. The Lila B bronzer, the Becca Sunlit bronzer, the Bare Minerals Invisible bronzer. They're all formulas that I prefer over this. This bronzer I'm actually going to hang on to because um, when I got it, it was kind of like sold as the dupe of the Tom Ford bronzer because um, similar packaging, like similar large pan. This was before the, um, before that famous Marc Jacobs bronzer launched. And I feel like the shade is kind of kind of similar to that Marc Jacobs coconut bronzer. So I actually really like the color. I like the finish of this powder. I'm using my MAC 187 brush. I think what I like about this bronzer color, what attracts me to it is that it's a, it's like a sculpting shade. Like it's not just warmth. It's going to also just give me a little bit more definition. I'm actually really digging this base. Oh my God. M my eyebrows are on. <laughs> Let's talk about blush. So when I went to rummage through my blushes to find the ones that have received the least amount of love um, over the past year, I came up with uh, more than one. <laughs> I'm going to be using one today and I'm going to actually be decluttering three of them. The one that I'm going to use and the one that I actually forgot that I owned which is terrible because I was so obsessed with this blush when it first came out. This is the Becca Luminous blush in the color Camellia. It is so stunning. I love this blush formula. It has the most beautiful luminosity running through it. You never need a highlighter when you're using this. It just kind of like glows from within. And it's just such a beautiful face brightening color for spring and summer. The blushes that I will be parting ways with are the two NARS blushes that have remained in my collection, um, not because I don't love them, but because they are so old, they are most definitely expired. Like, they just smell old, you know what I mean? And when I made my revisiting my first Sephora orders video, the times of purchase of these two blushes were in there. And to be honest, I told myself that like when I filmed those, that video and I realized how old these were, I told myself, okay, no, I'm going to be using them. I want to hit pan on them. I want to use them a lot more. And I haven't touched them since I filmed that video, which means I, I need to, I need to let it go. So I have NARS Deep Throat here, which is like a slightly more toned down version of the Becca Camellia, but I feel like with the Becca blush, I can get the same look. And then NARS Madly, I love this blush, but... I like Marc Jacobs Flesh and Fantasy more, to be honest. And uh, that one is new and fresh and does not smell like old plastics. And then another blush that I have not reached for in a very long time and that I don't see myself using is this uh, Rosy Glow blush from Dior. It's just, it's a very, very bright, um, teetering on cool tone pink. And I feel like back in the day when I used to use um, more cool tone shadows, I used to really be into cool tone taupes and I had really dark hair. Um, this worked really well with my complexion, but I don't see myself having dark hair anytime soon. And I just love warmer tones so much more. I just don't feel like this color flatters the makeup that I'm gravitating towards now. This blush is really, really pigmented, so I love to use the NARS Yachio brush to apply it because it does a nice job at kind of diffusing the pigment. It's so fresh and bright. Oh, what a lovely color. 
I really like this. This is a really nice, fresh complexion. I'm gonna use these two today. Yeah, I have not touched these <laughs> in over a year. This is the Too Faced Semi Sweet Chocolate Bar Palette. And this is the Tom Ford Nude Dip. Let me get the, those things out. So this is Tom Ford Nude Dip. Really, really beautiful colors. I don't know why I never reach for this. Probably because it does not have any matte colors in it. When I'm doing an eyeshadow palette look, I like to kind of get everything I need from the palette. Definitely need to use that more. And then the Too Faced Semi Sweet Chocolate Bar Palette. Um, there's just something about Too Faced eyeshadow palettes that just, it's never really, it never really quite does it for me. I don't think I'm their target demographic. I find that their matte colors are really, really good. They did that peach palette with all matte colors and that is actually a really, really excellent palette. So in this, in this palette, the reason that I kept it around is because the mattes are so good. But again, the reason I never reach for this is be because the shimmers are really underwhelming. So I have other palettes where I feel like I can just open that palette and I can get everything done with one, or I have single eyeshadows with colors that I'm absolutely obsessed over. This smells like chocolate still. I don't mind the smell. I think the smell is nice. I just find Too Faced, a lot of the times with Too Faced um, eyeshadow releases, I find them to be really like not well thought out. Um, I feel like they they just kind of constantly pump out product and it, it's not always really good. I feel like if they scaled back a little bit and did more of a quality over quantity approach, they would kind of deliver better results. They have some great products in their lineup, but I just think that there's just a lot of noise. I'm going to use the coconut creme color all over my lid. One of my favorite colors in this palette, and it's just kind of funny because it's such a bland color, but it reminds me of uh, Blanc Type by MAC. I'm like showing my age. With all the old discontinued products that I'm reminiscing about, I am the YouTube dinosaur. When people talk about 2012, like it's been, it was so long ago, I'm like, man, Let's talk about 2008. Yeah, the, the shimmers in here are atrocious. I'm gonna take the nougat color here and I'm gonna mix it with the mousse color and I'm gonna use that in my crease. Too Faced needs to just release matte transition shades that don't smell like anything. I would be so happy because they're really, really good. I'm gonna use that frosting color, which is like a dark brown with a slight hint of, of sheen. I'm gonna use that underneath. Now let's get in with uh, the Tom Ford palette. I'm going to um, mix, hmm, what should I do? Let's step out of the comfort zone. Let's just use this dark taupey color because I was gonna mix these two. No, I'm gonna use the, the more cool toned taupe. And I'm gonna use it dry because I want it to be more diffused. Oh my God, this is so pretty. Why don't I use you more? Okay, I love this eyeshadow. <laughs> I'm gonna take uh, the darkest color, this super, super juicy dark chocolate brown. I'm just using it to smudge my upper lash line just in the corner. I am looking really shiny though right now, I will have to say. I think maybe that, uh, maybe I used too much of that Armani Maestro Glow Foundation, which is like a serious glow giver. I'm going to, um, definitely going to need a more of a mattifying product to kind of knock back the shine here so let me go get that and I'll be right back now the last eye product that I have uh, have not used in a very very long time is this by Terry ombre black star in the color um, what's this called it's the really dark brown one it's called brown perfection and I think it's because I discovered nude sticks taupe and that kind of took place of this because I used to use this just to kind of line my under, like whenever I wanted to smoke out my lower lash line, I would use this. Um, and then I discovered Nude Sticks Taupe, which I kind of preferred over it, mostly because I can sharpen it and get a more get a more controlled application. This is a beautiful color. It's just a very, very, very rich dark brown. And I think if I revisit it and just use it more as an eyeliner, it does not budge, it's such a great formula. But in terms of using it as a standalone eyeshadow product, it's just a bit, it's a bit too dark and a bit too dull by itself. I do prefer the color, like the more shimmery colors that they have in this formula. If I were to recommend a color 
for you to try and the by Terry Ombre black stars I would definitely steer you more towards like the shimmery ones I find those to be a little bit more special but in terms of like a cream eyeshadow stick formula these are the most long-lasting ones that I've ever tried the Laura Mercier caviar sticks are great but on my oily eyelids they don't last very well so I always preferred this formula because this just does not budge it's like bulletproof and you can use this like sometimes I use it in my waterline too and it lasts really well Remember when we were all obsessed with these when they first launched and now I never see anybody talk about them? The YSL Glossy Stains. Such a beautiful color. It's called Wet Nude. It's shade number 208. I also have a brighter pink and like a fuchsia color in this formula, but I think with this look, a nude would be best. So I'm just going to use Makeup Forever 3C. I'm still bitter that these are discontinued. This is like one of the best lip liner formulas out there. So I hope they bring them back due to the outrage. I did see them, they're selling more colors on the Makeup River website. So now I'm gonna go in with my YSL Glossy Stain. I love the applicator of this too. It's got a really sharp tip. And honestly, the Glossy Stains are such an innovative product. They were way ahead of their time. But then liquid lipsticks happened and everyone was obsessed with liquid lipsticks for so long. But now that glossier lips are having a bit of a resurgence, maybe these will come back. Because it's such an innovative formula, it feels comfortable the whole time. Really nice color deposit and they actually are long lasting. They do leave a beautiful stain, even a nude color like this. I remember just applying it in the morning and I would still see remnants of nude lip um, on my lips at the end of the workday, which never really happens with, with a nude lip. I, it's usually the type of color that you always have to reapply. Now, putting this on, it just kind of like rekindled my love for these products. These are so, these are so good. I'm really digging these colors. If you do end up doing this little challenge and uh, play with makeup that you have not used in a long time, and if you manage to rediscover an old favorite, let me know what that product was in the comment section below, or if this kind of reminds you of, of a product that, uh, that you once loved and that you need to rediscover, let me know. I always love to catch up with you guys in the comments. I hope you're having an awesome day. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.